Hi, my name is Steve, and today I'll be reviewing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist for Sega Genesis. Um, in Europe it was released as Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, and in Japan it was released as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, The Return of Shredder. Um, the basic plot of this game is Shredder steals the Hyperstone from Dimension X, and he uses it to shrink Manhattan and plans to take over the world. And he challenges the turtles to try and stop his evil plan and so their idea is to use their high energy detector to track him down and defeat him so let's go check it out from what I understand this game is a lot like turtles in time which was released on Super Nintendo the same year but with some differences I think the gameplay is smooth the controls react in a timely fashion but in general the game does get a little repetitive. I really love the animation and the colors in this game. Uh, the music is great. One of my favorite parts is the environments. They're so detailed and uh, you can interact with different parts of the environment. Characters will come dropping out of the top of the screen from different places or coming out of doors which is pretty neat. Wait a minute, that's not a cave. It's obviously a sewer. They live in the sewer. I don't understand, whatever. Okay, anyways, so here we go. Grab the pizza. Damn! One great thing about this game is the different range of attacks. You can almost just button mash and they'll do something different depending on which direction you hold the controller. Now, this is one of my favorite parts. The reason I use Donatello in this game is because of his bow staff and his attack range is a lot greater. If you end up using Raphael, you pretty much have to be on top of the enemies before you can even hit them and you're a lot greater risk of getting hurt. The final part of this stage is you're back down in the sewers, but they're all flooded and there's these giant alien looking monsters coming out of the water that you can apparently walk on like Jesus. I'm pretty sure they're called pizza monsters, but I'm not positive. Finally, at the end of the stage, we face Leatherhead, the first boss. He's pretty easy, other than he has this attack where he throws these daggers across the stage, and it's kind of a pain in the ass if you're not paying attention. You can hit him four times, and then he'll dash across the stage and do his dagger attack, and then you can attack him again. But pretty easy, pretty straightforward. <laughs> The second stage is a bit of a relief because the enemies only take one hit, but there's a lot of enemies coming at you fast and if you're not paying attention, you know, they'll wipe you out, of course. The next part of the stage, you're on the ghost ship, and there's some pretty funny stuff that you can do on this stage. In the background there, there's a picture that'll drop on you when you are lured in to get a pizza. 
And of course there's loose boards on the rickety old ship which has some pretty funny uh, actions with it. Here we face my second most dreaded enemy in the game, just because they're a pain in the ass. They're fat, naked, muscly, they look like old women with their little shower caps on. I just hate it. Now in the final part of this stage, we're in a cave that we jumped out of the ghost ship into, and really there's not much eventful actions except stalactites come crashing down from the ceiling, but other than that, same old, same old. I hate these silver foot clan guys because you have to pretty much slide or do some sort of special attack in order to hit them, otherwise they'll just keep blocking it and it's a pain in the ass. More of the fat naked old women. Finally boss number two, Rocksteady. Now he doesn't have his cohort bebop in this game, which probably makes it a lot easier. Now, he's almost the same boss as Leatherhead, but I don't think he's as hard because he doesn't have his dagger attack. If you can anticipate where he's going to stop, then you can just jump there and strike him and he almost has no opportunity to do anything, so... <laughs> Now we face my number one most dreaded enemy. We faced him a few times before, but these little bastards are just, they just get to me. They're a pain in the ass. You pretty much, you know, the best attack you can do is some sort of sliding attack because if you just do a regular strike, they'll latch onto your hand or something like that and they just kick your ass. It's just crap. In the spirit of not spoiling the entire game, I'll go ahead and skip forward to the end, then I'll give you my final thoughts and let you experience the game for yourself. Now, when you're attacking Shredder, you don't get any hit registration. You just hit him and he blocks it and his life goes down. I guess he was just too cool to flash red when you actually struck him, so... It's a little confusing at first, but just keep hitting him and he'll go down. Now that you beat him, he falls off the edge, which is awesome. Kawabunga! Then it goes back to the city, and everything is returned. And probably the greatest part about the end of the game is Splinter standing there in the crowd of people, and no one seems to care. And then, also, a crazy note at the end. Right when April O'Neil finishes talking, this random kid comes flying up out of the crowd. I don't know. This game was a huge part of my childhood growing up. My brother and I used to play it all the time. It was one of our favorites. Um, I'd have to say that, you know, there's ups and downs in this game, but 
it's one of my favorites. I think it's a great game. I'd recommend it to anyone that is curious to try it or is just looking for a great throwback to the good old days. So, Well, that's the end of my first review. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you did, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Uh, I got a lot of plans. This is my first one. It's a little rough, but it'll get better, I promise. Thanks for watching.